No. Oh. Hi. And welcome Hello. to The Real Drunk. Where we are going to do drunk talking, give you drunk advice, and tell some drunk stories. To get started, let's do introductions. I'm Kia Speaks. And my drink of the night, you guys chose it, Jack Honey. And it is good. Oh, uh, I'm Angie, Elusive A, and my drink is Southern, you see it, Southern Comfort. And we have two special guests. This should have really been a Detroit edition, truly. <laughs> it should have. As are the two people hanging out with us. First up, yeah. she is a local celebrity already. She was already on our airwaves today. <laughs> the amazing <laughs> Candace. Hello. Hello, young world. How are you today? What My are you? Of choice is Hennessy XO and a beautiful sifter. Mm. Smell oh, that. Smell, smell that wealth. So classy. <laughs> so very classy. And last, but certainly not least, really just my favorite person on Twitter besides, Aww. like, myself. Besides <laughs> Jesus. Jimmy, J. Brito 6. Hello, everyone. <clears throat> now, um, Jimmy looks like he should be in fashion. But in reality, he's a lawyer. So you should listen to his legal advice. Or not. That's how I ended up going to jail. <laughs> See, there it is. Oh, I'm drinking old overhort. Old over overhort. Oh, how much have you had already? Rye whiskey. Not enough, apparently. <laughs> well, uh, go ahead and take your shot and let's get going. Oh, here we go. Cheers. <laughs> Ooh. All right, up first. Jimmy up first. Go ahead. As a pre number one, I posed this question today on Twitter Claire Underwood or Melly Grant? Quickly. Claire Underwood or Melly Grant? Kia. I am. I want to be uh, Claire, but the emotions take over. And I'm Millie. And plus, Millie likes liquor and fried chicken. So I'm okay with being Millie. <laughs> Jimmy. Claire. Claire Underwood or Millie Grant. I'm, I'm Team Claire all the way. Team Claire. So, Candace, I want to ask you the same question, but... Are you about to call me out because I don't watch no guys? I movies? am. You can't really answer it because you don't watch one of those shows. Which oh, show don't you watch? I absolutely can because let me tell you something. What I do know is that you mofos are not on Twitter every Thursday night talking about how well tailored Millie is, but we are talking about how well tailored Claire is, so Claire all day. Ain't nobody got time for Millie. Bye. Next question. Candace is the only black woman in America who has never seen Scandal. Never. Never. But I watched all of Parks and Recreation. All of it. Uh, well, well, well. See see where your priorities are. They stay. They stay with white women. My priorities stay with black women. Black Twitter is coming for your head. I'm, I'm, I'm real nervous, I gotta tell you. I'm real nervous. <laughs> Come, All right. Come to Detroit and see me, Black Twitter. I'd love to see you. Oh. Oh. Turn the location. <laughs> Come and get this fade, Black Twitter. That's what Candace just said. Just I'm going to be quiet now. <laughs> so, all roads lead to Jodeci. Like, everything, <laughs> every conversation always leads to Jodeci. And my favorite, I mean, well, he's not my favorite member of Jodeci, but he's, I think, the member that people <laughs> think of the most. Casey performed yeah. Pony with Genuine 
at CIAA. Jimmy, can you explain CIAA? I think so. So every year uh, there is a basketball tournament. Um, I think it's these. I want to say it's the SIAC or the MEAC, one of those uh, small black school conferences, sports conferences, um, and they gather together somewhere in North Carolina, I think Charlotte maybe, uh, for a basketball tournament. And apparently, I didn't know this when we were in school, it's a big uh, party. It's party time at the CIAA. I didn't hear about this until a couple of years ago, so I'm on the lake train too. Yeah, me too. It's definitely something that I didn't hear about until Twitter, so... Yeah. But let's see. Let's play a little clip just in case you didn't see or hear because it's amazing. <laughs> amazing? Amazing. That's a word. <laughs> So that's that's pretty much it. Um <laughs> any thoughts? Well what are your first reactions? Um, Casey still gets that good cocaine. <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot. Uh, Mr. Dalvin follows me on Twitter. I'm sorry. I apologize, Mr. Dalvin. Joe, do you know? Well, do you know? Do you know, do you know that they're friends still, or because it might not matter? <laughs> I don't know. That it's is true. a good question. <laughs> and if Mr. Dalvin ain't getting the good cocaine, he might be a little pissed off anyway. So. Oh, I don't know. To light, Jimmy. I wouldn't. I wouldn't worry. I wouldn't worry too much about that. <laughs> I'm pouring more drink. FYI. Yes. Did you see the no, lid action? Though? Did you see the lid action? The little man that That's was straight it. out of 1993. Like he is ready. He's ready to tour. He's ready to make this money. Uh oh. I just feel like his, like, Casey's leg had so much crack in it at that moment. <laughs> like, his leg was just in, like, literally somebody took a, a, a needle and just said, here's some crack, Casey. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Not heroin, straight up crack. He is putting crack in a needle. No. Just no. crack, crack in a needle. Crack in I, a needle. No, yeah, I, no, I understand. I got it. You know? So if you like put... It. If you put if you put crack in the needle in your legs, do your legs stay up all night and the rest of you go to sleep? And now you and now you talking my stuff. And now you see what I'm saying. It's a like do your legs just keep <laughs> flapping while you sleep? Yes. Yes, exactly. You it, it is the first sign of restless leg syndrome. Oh. While all those people taking that pill are doing crack in the leg. They're on they're doing leg crack. Yeah, that's probably right. But now y'all know the greatest part is at the end of that video. You guys gotta go and watch when Casey just lays down on the ground. He's singing away. But yeah, he laid straight on that stage. Huh? He laid flat on, on the stage. stage. Yes. Yeah, I'm a, I'm finna play it. No, I'm gonna play. Down? I'm gonna play it for myself, not for y'all. I'm gonna play it. For oh, myself. well. Because I probably can't, like, there's too much going on in my house for me to do anything right. No. No. I mean, are we, sure that, are we sure that this isn't Jodeci? <laughs> well, oh, you know what? And who was the kind of the chunky dude with the, I think he had braids? Why was the camera on him? Is he somebody we should know? I didn't know who he was. I think he's next to Genuine. He's got I, this cardigan on. I don't know. Yeah. I, fan. I am a Devontae fan. I love Devontae. He has been in my locker since I was 13 years old because when I got grown, I was going to be with Devontae. No Tiger Kylie miss. But, you know, I'm going to wait till I was little. 
Still got your picture up. Do you know that? I don't see you. Am I on video? No. I don't think so. I don't know what's going on with Jimmy's. What? Well, every time I click on your picture, I don't. I don't see you moving. Okay, never mind. All right, Jimmy. Oh, Lord. Sorry. Okay. All right. All right. So, next. Up. I hope y'all. So Key has mentioned Kylie and is it? Tiga or Tiger? I'm sorry, I'm old. I don't know. How do you pronounce it? It's sure. Tiger. Tiger. It's Tiga. Because I watched one of the Pooh. No. Okay. <laughs> no. Can I can I just ask like what what do what do black people have against an ER? <laughs> like why can't it why can't he be ti just tiger? Tiger. Right. <laughs> <laughs> why do we have? A, why we gotta be Tiger? It took too many of his 140 characters on Twitter. You yeah. know, we yeah. have to like well, and delete S's to words too. Like you know, you go into the Kroger's. Oh yeah. Plus one is mm -hmm. not good enough. No, you my, you never. My uncle worked at Ford's. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. In Kroger. Later, I gotta go to Kroger's. Or Myers. Or Myers. I don't think anybody knows what Myers is except for the people who live in Michigan. I don't. Really? Oh. Yeah, they so don't have Myers so, past Michigan. So Myers Shut up. is like our regional Walmart. Except oh, I just blow they your mind, have awful people. My hair's perfect. What'd you say? My hair just blow your mind? You did. My mind is sufficiently blown. Okay. That's uh, Sorry. Uh, Kylie and Tiger? Yeah. Tiger. 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 They okay. are rumored to be getting married. Oh, Jesus Christ. They are talking marriage. Because, um, and her sisters are being very supportive with her, the rumor says. And this um, story is from Rolling Out Back Room. Because they said that they don't want her to endure the heartache that they have had to endure growing <laughs> up, breaking up in relationships. Because Kylie <laughs> and Tiger are going to be together forever and ever. Amen. Right? Amen. Amen. That's what happens when you get married. It's that, automatically it, forever and ever. And especially it's what happens when you get married at 17. <laughs> Especially when you're a Kardashian Jenner. No shade. I'm just saying. History has shown us that marriage does not equal forever. But that is that is, I guess, beside the point. So but I can't even say best of luck. Yeah. Do you, Do you see my face? You see how I can't even comment on this? I was gonna say it looks like you had something to say, but I don't have about this ridiculous situation. The bottom line is, is that Kris Jenner is out of order for allowing her child to be anywhere near this situation. Whether they are dating or what, whatever they are doing, it's out of order, it's inappropriate, and I don't have time for it. Oh. Okay. All right. Well, well that's right. settled. I get well, it. I wish you were a little bit more passionate about it, but okay. I mean... Yeah. Me too. I don't, I don't know why you're holding back. You should just right. tell us how you really feel. Seriously. <laughs> No, but since it is weird. I mean, even I think Chloe came out or maybe like some old tweets or Facebook posts surfaced about, you know, some guy that she used to mess with when she was a teenager. And I think he was 25 or something or 30. And she was saying how, you know, now it's kind of gross to her. Like this guy was a grown man. She was a teenager. You tell that story. That mm -hmm. was before Kylie got with Tiger, right? Yeah. And so, Tiger. I don't know. I think Kylie is going to grow up 
like in 10, 15 years, she's going to be really disappointed in the people who are supposed to protect her and say like, Here's hey, this, is, <laughs> this isn't cool. Uh-uh. I would like to take a poll of everyone here. Think back to the person you were dating at 17. <laughs> would you like to be married to that person right now? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I would, the last person I knew that I was going to marry when I was like 23, I don't even want them in my world right now. Let them You don't even want to be their Facebook friend. Exactly. Every time they like my picture on Instagram, I'm cussing them out. Like, why are you here? Go away. So. Yep, exactly. And I'm pretty sure Kylie's going to feel that way one day about a Negro named Tyga. Right. Or Tigger. What are you Tigger. 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 Tigger.
It was something I was watching that a while back where they were showing people having sex in an MRI machine. What uh, what category on red tube um, do you have to <laughs> click to 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 get to get to that section? The that nerd category. <laughs> I've never seen that category. Like there's like there's teen. <laughs> Asian. <laughs> you can go and just jump right on you, Keith. Oh, goodness. Right. Is, oh. Inter, is interracial, like, what? Miss Shante Baby said, I thought you were going to say the selfie vibrator buzz every time you took a selfie. No, hey. Mm. That no, that's what I thought, too. That would be so, yes. That would also increase the number of selfies that were uh, taken. Well. Absolutely. In my right. world. So I, I know I'm not the moderator, but exactly how much more time are we spending on this topic? <laughs> we are moving on. Thank you. We're going to move this right along. Go ahead, Keith. Sorry, I'm trying to tweet, y'all. So, you know. Um, I don't know what we're talking about next. Oh. I would just like to say I would just like to say I just got a tweet or a text or something from my friend Dawn and she said she's watching from her phone and hollering. <laughs> yes. What's her name? Dawn. 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 Shout and out to Dawn. Also, Thanks. And Cynthia for watching is watching with a glass of wine. Yes. This show is actually for what we like to call the wash and alcoholic. Because every Friday night we sit up and we drink and tweet because we are too old and tired to go out to the bars. And it's cheaper to buy your own bottles than drinks at the bar. So here we are. You know, I got, I got to be honest when um, you guys asked me to do this, I was just pissed that I had to put on pants on a Friday night. So, like, I'm wearing pants right now and I'm irritated. You're better than me because I'm not wearing pants. All right. <laughs> that was way too much information. So, but um, hopefully, I will not have to stand up because that is not the show that I give away for free. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you charge for that show? Yes. <laughs> but uh, next up, Ti, who is the picture? ATL two. Who is here for ATL two? I'm here for it. Why are you here for it, Jimmy? Because I only rock the new, new. Yes. 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 Now, I think th I, I think that about sums it up. Angie. I'll be honest. I don't know what any of these words mean, guys. I don't know oh. a new, new. I, is it a new, new car? A new, new. Okay. Pair of shoes? I don't. Angie tried to call Candace mm -hmm. out for never having seen Scandal. But Angela has never seen ATL, the first one, <laughs> that has been out since, what, 2005? That has mm -hmm. been in your dorm from freshman year? Did you even <clears throat> know that? I did not know that. Listen. <laughs> the main my character defense. attends your alma mater at the end of the movie, and you didn't watch it? In my defense... I hardly care about real people who attended my alma mater. So oh. I will... <laughs> See? I'm sorry. Okay? I'm sorry. Oh, goodness. <laughs> okay. All right. So here's my question about ATL2, though. That is one of those movies where I've never cared what happened to those characters once it ended. So what the hell is ATL two going to be about? I no, I will say Level? I was I was really concerned about what happened to Esquire. <laughs> Remind us who Esquire is because you know liquor. I can't remember which one he is. He was the one who was who found out about New New's real identity because he was uh, working at the country club. He went um, idly. Yeah. <laughs> So what do you think uh, happened to Esquire? Yes, Ivy League. He went from Bankhead to the Ivy League. What do you think happened to him? Well, he's definitely married to a white woman. That is for sure. <laughs> I don't think we need to debate that at all. 
Okay, Candace, your uh, your video went away. Oh, you're back. Never mind. So he's married to a white woman. Where is he working? Somewhere um, in New York. J.P. Morgan. Wall, Wall Street. Yeah, some horrible company. <laughs> living his best life, by the way. I'm not <laughs> He's living his best life, okay? Let me tell and you something. I also want to yeah. know if the, if the uncle ever got any cutty. Oh, it's hard to get cutty. This is true. You know what? You know what? <laughs> my um, my thing on ATL two is Ti is in it. He has to bring out Iggy. Iggy Azalea will oh, be. God. Oh God. No, and she is going to be the white girl from Marietta who comes to Bankhead to buy her weed, and she falls in love with Shad, Ti's character, and Nunu Nunu's pissed. You you um, really given you've given this some thought. I mean, I had to because I was so confused. And then someone on Twitter, I can't remember who it is. I'm sorry, alcohol. But someone said, <laughs> you know, Iggy will be in it, and I was like, yes. So I had to write Iggy into the storyline because you know, Iggy <clears throat> is hip hop, right? Uh, I just got really depressed like three times. Look, <laughs> Candace, your face. <laughs> Listen, Linda, listen, nah, nah, no thank you. I know one thing, If Sha, he better be married to Nunu, and they better have a bunch of babies, and she better have dropped out of Spelman. I know that much. <laughs> so, if that thing happens, I'm not going to pass. <laughs> she definitely dropped out of Spelman. Come on, Nunu ain't graduated from the dog on Spelman. <laughs> Whew, but keep, mm, I'm not going to say what I was going to say because 1881 will be all in my mentions and text messages. No, let, let's move on to the next thing. But wait, but wait, wait. I do want to shout out Connie Chame Chameleon on Twitter yes. who said, don't panic. I've never seen ATL either. So boom, suck it, everyone. I am Is not... That is it is was that your old jail account when you got uh <laughs> You tried when you, got, when you got put in Twitter jail. You tried it. Angel over there Angel over there Angel over there talking about I've never seen ATL either. Miss Barn to you said who told Candace she needed to wear pants. The Bible says come as you are. And Miss Barn to you is a pastor, is a preacher. She is a minister of the word. So next Ooh. time you're is she? yes, and you don't have sure? to <laughs> <laughs> Look, it has been written. You do not have to wear pants. Praise Jesus. Well, let me tell y'all something. Um, my grandma said I had to wear pants, and I know my grandma got more power than Jesus. So I'm putting these pants. <laughs> mm -mm. Y'all not gonna have me get in <clears throat> trouble. No, thank you. Not today. <laughs> Not today, Satan. Not today, Satan. All right. Who saw Empire uh, this week? Okay, I don't watch Empire. Oh, gosh. Oh, jeez. Okay. Can I say how much I didn't enjoy it? Why did you not enjoy it this week? This has been the second week in a row. This has been the second week in a row where I was um, able to do something other than watch it with my whole heart, like I like got on the phone. I was oh wow! Bored. And why did Cookie had that out? How did she recover from being drunk so quick? You know like, what? My favorite part is when she got in the back of the car, threw her legs up, Ivy, and said, "Take this cookie." <laughs> <laughs> Y'all know. Monique. Monique swears that was supposed to be her role. So the first thing that popped up in my mind was Monique in the back of the SUV with her legs up saying, take the cookie. No, thank her, her, her unshaven legs? Yes. No. <laughs> no. I like to get on that woman's legs. No. Because she don't shave them. She doesn't. There, there are pictures on the internet. Yeah, well, I don't shave in the winter. Look, I do good in the spring, so I'm not judging her for not saving. 
But mm. that would have been a whole different scene had those been Monique's legs up in the air. No? Yes? Maybe? I, yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I just don't see her in that role at all. Like, I don't see her anywhere on the show. So, sorry, Mo. Like, I just don't see it for you, boo. I mean, she tried it, but that was, I mean, you know, you 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 got to do what you got to do in order to make some waves out here, but no, no thank you, Monique. No, we go. I do think it's funny, though, they had this whole controversy about um, <coughs> Mo wasn't willing to, like, promote pressure, <coughs> but you know she got this what? new movie out, Blackbird, and I've noticed she's been tweeting it and trying to promote that shit, so she's like, no, I need to keep getting these checks. So if y'all do You follow Monique on Twitter? I'm going to come on. Huh? You following Monique on Twitter? No, ma'am. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, I see retweets. I see. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? And you People know retweet. blogs make an article retweet. out of tweets, so. Well, here's my thing. Monique has been doing all this press, but Angie, you're one better than me because I didn't even know the movie she was promoting. <laughs> was a movie, and I thought, because Isaiah Washington is also in the movie, and I was like, oh, they're doing a Blacklist movie. <laughs> well, that's what they're doing. it. Wow. Why the hell is she spending so much time talking about Lee Daniels and being Blacklist and not her movie? Because I couldn't remember the name of her movie. Damn. And see, I only know it because, um, <clears throat> what's his name? Patrick... Patrick M. Polk, I think that's his name, the guy who did The Skinny and Noah's Ark, he's directing it. That's the only reason I know the name of the movie. Okay, Candice, but... <laughs> he did what? He did Noah's Ark. And, okay, all right. Angie's the movie nerd. I'm just like, <laughs> I mean, it's, it was he a, did a it bunch of movies that went double glass. Okay, cool. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm happy everybody is going to be in his double glass movies. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Okay. A Baby has told us what happened to Nunu. Nunu got what? hacked up by a rapper, but she still graduated. And you know what? I bet she graduated without debt because her bills were paid. Boom. Her tuition was paid. That First is of all, look. <laughs> her daddy lost all his money in the in the financial crisis. What are y'all talking about? Her daddy ain't but got no the money. the rapper, the rapper has money. <clears throat> wow, she married a rapper. No, that's a super she, fine no, way to get away. Someone her. said Mary. She got knocked up by a rapper. Can we, we, we talk we, about what happened to Ludacris's baby mama or no? <laughs> Because mm. that's not a sure fire way. The lawyer's right. We are going. We're gonna have to do a whole show on break babies. That's a good episode. Ooh, break babies. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I might have been a break baby. Wait a minute. I might be a break baby. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh <shit>. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I mean, I I just need for you to not make that realization on, I don't know, national television. <laughs> all oh, go, 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 go. Out there, like all of it, all of the business. Some somebody asked her if we have a hashtag. <laughs> oh. oh, we should have a hat. That is hashtag the real drunk. The real drunk. Listen no, here. Guys. Here, let me do this. I'll do it. No, it's got to be real drunk show, right? Uh, sure. Change the hashtag. Give me a Are you? I'm sorry. No. You want to just do not. real drunk? No, it's fine. Real drunk show. Let's get. Yeah, that works. All this right. show needs a producer. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> you you heard all that shade and tea. Well, <laughs> well, guess who won't be booked again? Guess, <laughs> guess, guess who just exiled herself 
Oh. 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 oh man. Okay. So um speaking of black people, black stuff, Olivia Pope got real black this week on scandal, right? Ma'am. Oh man. Break? Olivia no. Pope said, look, I may have spent three years in a semester at Agnes Scott College, but damn it, I finished at Spelman. And I'm going to show y'all how much I love the Negroes. Okay? So get into it. She got behind oh. that tape. She got behind that tape, didn't she? <laughs> With her Prada bag. The activist man tried to say, oh, you got that $300 bag? You not for us? And she was like, fuck you. Yes, I am. And walked behind that tape. <laughs> she, got, she got behind that tape and started protesting like a mug. <laughs> What did you guys think of the episode? Because I'm going to be honest. Last Thursday when I saw it premiere, I was like, oh, Shonda's, Shonda's messing with a touchy situation. What's going to happen? How she's gonna, How is she going to tell this story? What is black Twitter going to think? Because, you know, there's a segment of black Twitter who likes nothing unless someone from their segment of black Twitter is behind it. So what did y'all think about the episode? I. You want me to go first? Go, go ahead, Jim. I, I watched it. I, I had a lot of emotions. Um, part part of it was, I still felt like it was too soon. Mm. I think that's the one thing. Like it was, it was still like too soon. And I probably need to watch it again to like really get like into. I mean, there were some really good parts, like when the cop is going on this rant. Um, and I tweeted out like a, a portion of the DOJ uh, report that really sort of encapsulates what the cop was saying, but you know it's it's still fresh for a lot of people. So I think a lot of people are just not really going to be able to receive it. And maybe I'm far removed because I didn't feel like it was too soon. I was. I was happy that she showed so many aspects of the conversation uh, while that conversation was happening in hopes that it would make some people think about their perspective a little differently. Now, if you read what um, some people on Twitter had to say, they didn't receive it. A lot of people who don't look like us just turned the television off and was not pleased with that episode of Scandal. I, I thought black people are the only people that watch Scandal anyway. <laughs> no, the whites get into it. If you're white and really? you watch this right now, please confirm or deny. Do you watch Scandal? Cindy, do you watch Scandal? I don't. White Cindy, do you watch? White people. Here's my thing with the episode. Oh, okay, Listen. sorry. Oh, were you finished, Jimmy? Uh, no, no, no. I, I was just saying, I was just calling out white people, calling on them. Oh, okay. White people, please. Okay. White people. Um, Here's my thing. This is why I got upset yesterday. Because, number one, everybody knows I'm a Shonda Rhimes fan. But I saw a tweet last night that questioned whether or not, you know, they did this episode to, like, cash in on black pain. My problem with that is... When, first of all, Shonda didn't write the episode. Let's stop thinking that... <laughs> Shonda writes every episode for every Shonda Lamb production because that's not the case. But never mind that. Or <laughs> or every show, every black show. Period. <laughs> yes. Right. In including Doc McStuffins. I don't know. Shonda <laughs> Lines did not write Living Single. She didn't write Martin. Like, let's stop it. Okay. That's one thing. The second part is like, when have you ever seen like a, a Shonda Rhimes show? Three like really sensitive topics irresponsibly. I mean, she talks about I'm talking about Gray's private practice scandal, her the films that she's done, like everything. Those topics they tend to handle really well. Blacks, women, adoption, gays, like everything is done like really sensitive. So why would she picked 
Ferguson of all things to cash in on. Like y'all really tried it. Why you did you really try it? to cash in on Ferguson? This lady has what three, two television shows of working on a third for the fall, I believe, on television and. Discussing something as polarizing as Ferguson is really going to make her more money. Come on, black folks. Do better. Ooh. Okay. Don't do Shonda no more. Oh, go ahead, Kim. I have something to add to the scandal conversation. I have confirmation that at least one white person is watching Scandal, but she just started watching on Netflix, so... Did yeah. she... Was was the last episode her first show? No, she's watching it on Netflix, so she's binging seasons. Um, oh. Not quite... Yeah. Oh, when it was really good. Oh. I wouldn't know, because I was watching Parks and Recreation. Wow. Right. Wow. Right. Wow. <laughs> right. Like a thug. Oh. Right. But a lot of scandal, you could see, you could see a lot of Ferguson in the scandal episode that aired Thursday night, and which was actually, it worked out as pretty timely seeing that the Department of Justice just released their report on investigating the Ferguson findings. And because Jimmy is a lawyer and just not good at fashion. <laughs> if you follow us on Twitter, you know Jimmy was trying to school this lady about how grand jury was it a lady or a man? It was a man. Okay, so he was trying to school this man on how grand jury procedures work and the man <laughs> did not listen to him. And he told Jimmy that he should stick to fashion. Which was hilarious to us all because Jimmy is a lawyer. <laughs> so Jimmy is gonna set down his fashion hat and tell us what we need to know about these uh, the DOJ, the Department of Justice's report on Ferguson. Help us out because we're confused and we're angry and we're emotional and we want to understand. Okay, so probably not the best time to drink and make <laughs> to be emotional emotionally drunk and talk about racism uh, but here go the DOJ report is what the cool kids would call is this what the kids are saying this is a read is that is that right this is a yes. read by the Department of Justice Use that terminology Jimmy yes <laughs> yes this is a this is what they would your mid 30s. Yes. Right. So <clears throat> essentially, um, I'm going to use some semi technical terms, but so the Department of Justice investigated uh, the Ferguson Police Department and really the city as a whole uh, in what is called a pattern and practice uh, violation. So there had to be uh, pattern, patterns and practices, uh, institutional practices that violate people's constitutional rights. Uh, Fourth Amendment, First Amendment, Fourteenth Amendment rights. Those are the things that were found uh, as violations. So two overarching things that happened. Uh, the police department engaged in constitutional violations um, that were driven by the, the profit motive of the city, right? But it's not just the police department. It's also the, uh, the municipal court as well. So they're basically in cahoots together, and they get about 10% of their funding, their city funding, through um, traffic stops, uh, municipal violations. And so essentially the Department of Justice says, look, y'all got to cut it out, right? We see you now. Uh, what Eric Holder said was that, you know, some of the protesters were right, right? That's what he said in his, um, in his, in his press conference. And so now, going forward, Ferguson can either uh, work with the Department of Justice to, to make changes, or the Department of Justice can sue, and they will enter in what is called a consent decree to, for the department to monitor um, the city and the police department to make the necessary changes. And I didn't realize this was uh, possible, but the Eric Holder said today that you know, this disbandment is possible. 
So. Oh wow. Um, I'm glad you're explaining that because I'm gonna be honest. It just feels like all the Department of Justice does is shows up, writes a report, and disappears, and nothing really changes. So there are options as to what can happen with the Ferguson Police Department. Correct. Well, yeah, and I think things are already happening, right? So people, some people resigned today. A few people were fired, right? The clerk that they that the, that what the report said is the clerk has the most power out of anybody, right? Um, she could she could issue warrants. She could you know uh, collect fines and stuff like that. And she was the one who was sending these racist emails, right? Um, and so the the other thing I want to say was you know this is this is essentially Jim Crow, right? Right. Um, or, or what I would like to say, this is James Crow II, right? It's it's a little dressed up, but it's still like Jim Crow, like under like once you scratch the surface, it's mm-hmm. lips it's it's lipstick on a pig, right? So, um, the one thing I disagree with Eric Holder what he said today, he said that he thought that this was an anomaly. I don't think it is, and a lot of other people of color in America probably agree this is not an anomaly. This is what happens to people day in and day out. And it's a wonder that people have not rioted and looted and burned shit down before now, right? Because it's warranted. So that's my thing. They all you hear people talk about how violent black people are. But if we were really a violent people, as they say we are, we would have burned this bitch down a long time ago. Right. So, so right, you got all the Second Amendment people, right? Don't tread on me. So, the Obamacare right is treading on your individual rights because I'm this black man is making you have health care, <laughs> right? Go get better, asshole. But, when, <laughs> but these people don't show up when people's actual constitutional rights are being violated day in and day out, right? And if black people in mass picked up arms, right, to arm themselves, to protect themselves against the government, what do you think would happen? You don't have to answer that because I already know I already know what's gonna happen. And by the way, the father on Scandal be- definitely definitely would have gotten shot in Detroit oh. with a shotgun last night. So Seriously. <laughs> B. Wells was a proponent of black people arming themselves to protect themselves against white violence at the time when lynching was um, was a huge thing. It was a huge threat to black life. And um, I recently read that Ida B. Wells, she was very involved in the anti-lynching lynching movement, and she became involved in that way, uh, that way because her friend, who was a grocer at the time, was lynched because his business was successful and it was threatening the white grocery businesses in their town. So I thought I had never heard about how she got involved in the anti-lynching movement, but I thought that was real interesting. Okay, that's it. that's all I have. Any any other questions? Y'all got any questions about that, or are y'all good? I think we're good. I'm checking Twitter. I don't see any extra. Um, Jitterbug212 is really into it. He says, or she, I didn't, she I'm sorry. I apologize. I didn't, um, I didn't enlarge the Abby. But she says, um, Shonda timed the Ferguson report to coincide with her show. <laughs> I, I totally believe. I totally believe it. And she also says lots of white women are fans of Shonda. Who else allows the white lady to be with a fine black man? Take me. So I'm not going to comment, have, but. I do have one question, Jenny. Do you think Eric Holder believes that this is an anomaly, or do you think that was the political thing to say? Or do you not have a comment at all on that? Um, I, think, I think he really believes it. Um, and I think so because this is really like this is like old school racism, right? I mean, you know, a lot, and because there's only twenty one thousand people, who's going to care, right? Mm-hmm. 
um, until a black kid get get shot in the street, right? This still would have been going on. So I really think that he thinks that this is an, an anomaly, and probably the breadth of these of of what happened is probably is an anomaly, but it goes on in different levels everywhere across the country. And I think he understands that too. Mm. I had something that I was going to say to end the conversation. Oh, I forgot, but then I remembered because whiskey grain. But there it um, is. <laughs> I just want to go on record of saying is Everything in that DOJ report is exactly what people from Ferguson and people who actually looked at police statistics from, all, from um, mid-August when Mike Brown was first murdered by Darren Wilson, because that's what it is, people won't say that, but he was murdered in the street by Darren Wilson. It confirms everything they were saying. So it will be interesting to watch how this plays out, not just in Ferguson, but for the national conversation of what police policing looks like and how we deal with police brutality. All right. We got serious. Real serious. It got real heavy. Are we going to talk about this letter now? Yes. Candace. Okay, now it's time for drunk advice, which is the best kind of advice, right? Because you have no inhibitions and you can just say how you feel and help people be <clears> safe <throat> in life. And we think we're poor, pretty smart people. We may be drunk, but we're still smart, right? Yep, for the most part. We're going to share our uh, request for drunk advice now. So here's the thing. This should be called drunk advice while trying to read drunk. So here we go. <laughs> so, FYI, Candace is not Floyd Mayweather. She can read. If Absolutely. <laughs> if the alcohol made her do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and this boy is not that bright. But anyhow, <laughs> dear friend, my girlfriend and I are both 24. We've been together for four years, and I really love the shit out of her. I'm ready to propose to her and I and spend the rest of my life with her. That 112 song, <laughs> Let's Get Married. <laughs> that what? Anyhow, that 112 song, Let's Get Married, keeps playing in my head. So I know it must be time for us to jump the vacuum. Parentheses, bosses don't use brooms. Parentheses, bosses don't use brooms. Parentheses. But one of our first dates was to the mall, because of course it was. And I've seen the type of engagement ring she wants. And I do add right here, all caps, I can't afford that shit. He spelled that, I, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What do I do? Do I keep working? <laughs> keep saving and wait it out or do I buy her a ring within my budget and deal with the fallout because there in caps will be fallout when it comes. Thanks. A lost boss. <laughs> let me, can, please let me start. Oh Lord Jesus, please. Candace, go for it. Go for it. Look, little boy. Look, little boy. Look. First of all, First and foremost, you are 24 uh, years old. You don't have no business marrying nobody until you learn that 112 did not sing that goddamn song. It was boom. Jagged Edge. I will boom. kick your ass if you say that dumb shit again. I am tired of you 20-year-old fools telling me who sang what song in the early 2000s. I was there. I lived. That's not here or there. But you said you were a boss. You signed this letter. Thanks. A lost boss. No, he said he was a, a lost boss. A boss ain't never lost, first of all. And a boss can afford a goddamn engagement ring. I'm too tired. I gotta go. I'm tired now. He done pissed me off this day. When you sent that goddamn letter to me, I'm I was mad when I saw it, and I'm mad now. I've been mad all day. Sorry. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> Who um, lived through the 2000s? I'm just angry. That first I decade of 2000. I was in my 20s when that song came out. He can kiss my ass. White Slab and Jagged Edge have nothing to like. So. Nothing. Nothing. 
both, you definitely are lost. Oh Lord! Oh Lord! That's the one real part of that letter. That brother is <laughs> lost. <laughs> so, um, first of all, little boy. Oh Lord! You know, and you know what's interesting to me now that I think about this? He talking about bosses don't use brooms. <laughs> Like, he doesn't even know a world where hardwood floors exist. <laughs> <laughs> like, what kind of boss doesn't know that lino like linoleum, first of all, let's start there, right? <laughs> linoleum. <laughs> linoleum is a thing. <laughs> but first, fur furthermore... <laughs> <laughs> no one is ever gonna ask us for advice. You realize that, right? We are giving good advice. The bottom line is, look, nobody got no business marrying nobody who won't take the engagement ring that you hand they punk asses. If you will, if somebody loved you, they will they will take what uh. you give. Until Ooh. time gets better. This little boy is lost. He is confused. Um, this what? girl don't love him. This girl don't love him. Um, <laughs> what kind of... I'm sorry. That's that's my son in the background. That letter upset uh, baby tissues. <laughs> you better tell lost boss that he going to have a baby crying in his background soon if he marry that girl. This is, this is the life, lost boss. This is your life. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jimmy, you are our real perspective of me. What would you say to a 24 year old guy, and you're the only married person on, uh, on with us? What would you say to a 24 year old who was worried about his the love of his life, not uh, the ring he could afford, was good enough? The love of his short ass, punk ass life. Huh? <laughs> He don't even know nothing. So, this is this is what I would say. Sit your dumb ass down somewhere. You talking about y'all? Y'all both twenty four and y'all been together for four years. That means that uh, they both been smelling Similac on each other's breath. For the first three years that they've been together, right? And he talking about he can't afford the ring. What kind of life is he finna give this young woman? He can't afford. He can't afford the ring. He can't give her hardwood floors because he don't know nothing about that. <laughs> Probably can't buy a good vacuum. No and let me right. No Kirby. And we not we not even gonna talk about a Dyson ball. No, we we not even mm -mm, we not gonna talk about that. And if he don't know that a fucked up vacuum can ruin a marriage like anything else, he, he, he don't need to be doing this. If that ain't the truth. See. So, okay, all right, I'm done. That's all I got. So, um. Now Mrs. Moody says, anyone that doesn't know the difference between 112 and Jagged Edge isn't old enough to be married. Thank you. Thank you. Who, is, who said it? I'm going to follow him on Twitter because he's a smart person. That was Shanti person. at Now Mrs. Moody. That person. I'm going to follow him right now. Boom. That person, I Shanti, just got to follow. Little Brown D says, I'm still back there on Jump the Vacuum because bosses don't jump brooms. <laughs> like, <laughs> wait, wait. She says, like, jump to the front of the government cheese line, boy. <laughs> Don't let that boy mess you up, young woman. Person. Don't let that boy mess you up. I am weak. I feel, I feel so sorry for this woman. I have, a, I have a little bit of advice for the young woman, though. As someone who's 33 and single, I will just say this. It is hard enough to find someone who you like long enough to even consider marrying because I'm going to be honest, after about 
10 days, I'm like, mm, I don't like you no more. There you go. So there I don't like myself a lot of days, so <laughs> hell no. So I'd be damned if I'm going to turn you down because I don't like the ring that you bought me if I like you. We just gonna, look, we just have to come up with a plan. I actually had know someone. I won't say how I know this, but their fiance didn't like the first ring they got, turned it into a pendant, and bought another ring. Amen. And that's a conversation that mature couples are able to have with each other. Yes, no, maybe. I just hey, wait, 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 wait. She she took her engagement ring. And turned it into a pendant on her necklace because it was uh -huh. small enough to be a pendant. Was this was <laughs> this like five years later, or was this something like, oh, look at this little, oh, yeah, I'm just uh -huh. gonna put it around my neck. Like, it, it, was, it was before they got married. Um, <laughs> and, and I don't know, uh, you look. And my ass would have turned into a, a chariot, a carriage, like the pumpkin in the story. And I would have, I would have rolled out that some bitch. There's no turning down your ring, huh, Jimmy? You listen. You turn my love down. That's it. That's it. That's that's all. Uh, host it down. Ask me while I, why I was drinking water. And uh, for the record, I am all out of. <laughs> so that's all I have for now. I could get up and walk and get a glass of wine, but we have already established that I'm not wearing pants, so that's not a good idea. I think that we want to get these views up that you absolutely should get up. <laughs> <laughs> tweets popping. Let's do it. But guys, listen, it is now. It, it's now 9.03. We've been doing this for an hour. It doesn't seem that long. Yeah, it show oh. No. I got, I got a great no. recommendation. Okay, what's your recommendation, Candace? That's next. Now we're going to give you drunk recommendations. Drunk recommendations are things that we like, and we're going to tell you why we like them. Go, yeah. So... Let me tell you all, I spend a lot of my life boycotting things that treat people unfairly. I don't go to Walmart because fuck Walmart, and I wasn't going, I can't say Walmart? No, uh -uh. I don't want to buy Walmart. What's happening here? Yeah. Hey, you see this Walmart? I see. Little finger to you, Walmart, and the Waltons. And the Waltons. And we're not talking about John, John Boy either. Boom. <laughs> And so I'm a I'm a I'm a big supporter of um, the you know LGBT community. I I'm, I'm I'm here for it. I'm supporting. I am um, you know up with the people. I'm an ally all day. Mm. Um, and so I didn't eat Chick Fil A. I didn't eat it because bigotry chicken is not good chicken. And so I don't I don't know the uh, yard, but, the, but, but but I'm, but. The yard bird has been good to our people now. But I apologize to the LGBT community. I couldn't give up the chicken. Well, Kim, but my best friend is a big fan. Fresh. My best friend is a big fan of the Chick Fil A, and I also didn't think it was all that great. Right when I had tried, <laughs> Chick -fil -A, whatever. We don't have. By the way, we don't have Chick Fil A in Detroit. I should probably tell everybody that now. Yeah. And so what has happened is that once a month, my best friend drags me kicking and screaming. Quite honestly to Chick-fil-A an hour and 20 minutes or so down the road in Ohio to the Chick-fil-A and, 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 I, and I like it. <laughs> <laughs> that story did not end the way that I expected. <laughs> what I'm telling y'all is that I'll become a chicken bigot and I feel so bad about it. But this chicken is so damn good. Yeah. It's buttery mm -hmm. ass bun. It's simple ass pickle. It is quite delicious. It's, it's so way? simple. It's so that Chick simple. Sauce? That Chick Fil A sauce, y'all. Mm -hmm. Bruh. Oh, mm -hmm. that, that, that Polynesian sauce. Dip the fries in the Polynesian. Is oh, delicious. Oh, 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 o
Listen, now listen. Chick fil A is good. It's bigoted chicken, but it is damn delicious. And I, I mean, I will admit it. It it is delicious. <laughs> I will say, I will say how, I dealt, how I dealt with my bigoted um, guilt. Um, back when Obama was running for his second term, every dollar I spent at Chick fil A, I donated the equal amount to the Obama campaign. So that I balance out my bigotry. I am going to right now. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go on record. I will donate one dollar for every Chick Fil A sandwich I eat to glass. Boom! There you go. There you go. It is. There you go. Nice. There you go. Nice. That's good. Power to the people. That is it. Damn, I miss Chick Fil A, man. I miss Chick Fil A and Publix. Um, oh, God, Publix has some great subs, man. I'm in Atlanta, the home of Chick Fil A, so I am going to send you guys all Chick Fil A sandwiches to Detroit. Boom! Thank you. Wow. I got you. I now, appreciate I, that. I can't guarantee you how fresh it will be once it gets there, but hey, it will get. Well, it holds up. It holds up like a mother. <laughs> right. Jim, what's your uh, drunk recommendation? Oh, man, I didn't really have time to think about it. <laughs> um, so here's my recommendation. If you are a, uh, a straight rye whiskey drinker, old over overhort. <laughs> uh, this is quality whiskey uh, at a reasonable price. And so, you know, if you don't want to, you know, maybe, you know, spend the money for, I don't know, Gentleman Jack or uh, Bullet Rye, this is mm -hmm. a quality whiskey. Uh, this is like the uh, Ron Harper of whiskeys. Hmm. Okay. Well, Ron Harper was regarded as the poor man's Michael Jordan in his day. Mm -hmm. And thank uh, you. That was lost on me. And so uh, I would recommend Old Overhort. Uh, <laughs> I am always here for uh, straight straight rye whiskey. Nice. I'm always here for a liquor recommendation. Since 1810. 1810. Mm -hmm. 1810 was a good year. I, well, well, I mean, not for mm -hmm. our people. Yeah. I was just about to say, I don't like shit made in 1810. Right. We're still slaves, you know? Lockdown, shackles. Exactly. Hey, listen. Those white people took care of y'all <laughs> and fed you and, and clothed you and introduced you <laughs> to God, and this is the thanks that they get? Right. Look at you. Without the white man. Un 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 at you. Ungrateful and uppity. Up uh, and uppity. uppity. Right. I heard somebody say the other day that uh, every day in the future is the good old days for black people. Okay. Like tomorrow is the good old days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That sounds right. Yeah. That's, that sounds about right for me. My yeah. drunk recommendation this week is music. And I'm going to have to share with you guys Stacy Barth. That is how you pronounce her last name, right? Yes. Barth. Stacy Barth is amazing. Okay. I found her because um, this is. I'm sorry. I'm trying to do two things at one time, and you know, you're up. So, hey. Okay, I'm back. So I found her because she actually sings the song Beautifully Flawed, uh, which is in the Be and Mary Jane's uh, advertising material. And um, there was a little snippet. I heard it in the computer. So I went to her Sp uh, Spotify page, and I ended up sitting in the tub for like three hours listening to all her music. And it is perfection, and it is amazing. It is. She tells my life story. So everyone go and check out Stacey Barth. You will love her, I promise. I swear. If you Stacey. Go, Stacey. I follow her on Spotify. <clears throat> yes. And my favorite song of hers is 
Uh, Flaw Beautiful Creatures is actually the name of the song in the Being Mary Jane. That is my second favorite song, but my favorite song is Extraordinary Love. Because it's such a simple love. It can be a love story or a breakout breakup story, and it's just so simple and honest and pure, and you guys need that in your life. Go Do in and come. <laughs> Do I need that in my life, Key? Because I really like trap music in my life. Boom. Listen, I, those, um... I am the number one fan of trap music. I have a pole dancing playlist that is nothing but trap music. They is that available on Spotify as a public list? Yes, I'm going to have to share that with you guys. But you still need Stacey Barth in your life. Are we, are we, are we trapping out the bando? So music, those boys that sing the um no type, who Ray, I would say Sigmund Freud, because that's what I think when I see the last part of the name. It is actually <laughs> their name is actually eardrummers backwards. So I think it's yeah. Ray Murners. Okay. What? Well, you know what? I'm sorry I brought it up. I don't. I'm not even gonna address mm. it. Right now. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You did too. I, yeah, I was, I'm not, yeah. okay. Well, yeah. listen. Their album, their album is dope. Check that out, too. It, it is. Everything you need. Yeah. Oh. Okay. I'm good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so my recommendation, I'm a nerd out on y'all. It's actually a book that I've been reading called. A what? You want us niggas to read words? <laughs> It's a book. It's called. Oh, I'm looking. Hold on. I'm all right. It's called "Smoke Gets in Your Eyes and Other Lessons from the Crematory." It what? is. Wait. What? Okay. Before you judge. Well, I don't care. Too late. Wait. Too late. This sounds like pothead reading. Um, Angie. Huh? This sounds like pothead reading. It. <laughs> Pie hands love to read. Everyone knows that. You don't listen. As your counselor, you don't have to say anything. Okay. As your legal counselor, you don't have to say anything else. Thank you, and that's why it's good to have an attorney on your side. <laughs> <laughs> it's a book. This woman, like she's in her twenties, but she worked at a crematory, and so she's telling all these stories about like bodies that came in and it sort of examines like how we look at death and you know how like just sort of afraid of death and dead people and all of this stuff like guys I'm telling you it's good it's hilarious like these stories <laughs> y'all not Y'all not feeling it. I mean, you are selling this book so well, though. It is so good. Like, it's so rich. She has this, like, snarky type voice. Like, mm -hmm. she's got to be, like, 28, 29, something like that. But it's really, really good. And it's really forcing me to, like, look at... I don't know. I'm drunk, guys. Like, <laughs> can I talk about the show? You can, you can ask me about it on Twitter. We'll talk about it. Like tomorrow. What's, what, tell, us the, tell us the name of the book again. The book is Smoke Gets your in eyes. Your Eyes. And it's a fiction book? No, it's nonfiction. Oh, okay. I By Caitlin Dowdy. So, yes, for the okay. people who. Now it's who time for the part of the show that I am most excited about drunk storytelling. In drunk storytelling, we can do this two ways. And you guys will choose. We can pick roles and play out those characters. Or we can um, go kind of round robin and line and line to line add uh, a piece to the story. This week's drunk storytelling portion is dedicated to our Twitter favorites. The wonderful Chris Brown and <laughs> So, Ruchi oh, yeah, found out that Chris Brown had had a break baby. Wait, say her name again. Karuchi? <laughs> Is that not her name? Is that her name, Twitter? Tell me if I'm saying that right. 
don't know. I don't know. And I don't know. Listen, listen, <laughs> listen. I don't. I, I, you are saying it right. <laughs> Karuchi is fine with me. So Karuchi found out that Chris had had a baby with this 31, 32 year old model named Nia, who's from Houston, Texas. Here's where it gets messy. Karuchi has parted with Nia. And uh, Nia was also married at the time when her and Chris Brown conceived this nine month, this now nine month old baby girl whose name is Royalty. Oh God! So, you don't like Royalty, uh, Jimmy? I love Royalty. <laughs> we are come. We are all African Royalty, my sister. Yes. I like the little thing you put on your throat at the end. The little. <laughs> The low. What we're going <laughs> to do is retell the story of what happens, <clears throat> and Karuchi finds out that Chris Brown is pregnant, oh, or has gotten this girl, has this baby, because she didn't find out why the girl was pregnant. She found out, like, minutes before TMZ Press published uh, on the story. So, how do y'all want to do it? Y'all want to go round and round? Oh, here we go. Here we go. Candace, you're going to start off being karaoke. Is it karaoke? Karaoke. Oh, God. Miss Tran, you're going to be Miss Tran. You just found out, you just opened the link on the TMZ article. <laughs> You just found out that Chris Brown has this baby with someone who might be your friend. And you pick up your phone and you text Chris. And what, you, what's in the text message? And mind you, keep this in mind, that you have been loyal to Chris as he was in jail for a probation violation for beating up his ex-girlfriend, pop star Rihanna, who he broke up with you to go back with at some point. Yet you have stood by his side faithfully. And he goes and gets this former model, present nursing student, Nia, knocked up on you. What is your text message? Yes, do you have a question? <laughs> if, can I get my text message? Yeah. yeah. Ooh. All right. <clears throat> I'm a little drunk. Oh, by the way, my friend Evo Evelina on Twitter said her name is Pikachu. <laughs> not <laughs> I just read that. Naki Lolo. Okay. So, my question, my text would go something like this. Dear motherfucker. <laughs> comma. <laughs> I would just like you to know that now that I am, she is not in nursing school, by the way. She's probably at best at LPN. <laughs> at, at best. So, now that I'm in LPN school, I mean, you dated this girl that's in LPN school, and I don't understand why you would leave me for her because I'm an Instagram model. I'm way higher than the LPN school person, and you made me sad and you hurt my feelings, and I don't want to date you anymore because you're ugly, and you don't know how to do things right, like finish your probation shit. So I'm out. Love you. Pikachu. Boom. Woo! Woo! You are Chris Brown. You get that text message. How do you respond? Um, it doesn't have to be a text message. Like, no. how would you react? Oh, well, I, I I just assume that Chris Brown just dances all through his house. <laughs> like, at every moment possible. So you got to dance now, then. So, no, I'm not. Oh, I'm not finna dance. <laughs> But just a, just a, just imagine me moonwalking forward when I get the text message though. Moonwalking forward? How do you moonwalk forward? <laughs> I'm, I'm breezy. Shit. I'll show you how to moonwalk forward. That's, that's easy. So after breezy moonwalks forward. Uh huh. He, uh, he, and then and then and then I start singing. These hoes ain't loyal. Exactly. That's where I was going. You know? <laughs> It's Karuchi's fault because she's an unloyal, a disloyal hoe who would not stand by him at, as he decided to take care of his break baby. After he says these hoes ain't loyal, um, Angie, what happens? <sighs> After these hoes aren't loyal. So 
Chris calls his good friend Drake. Drake <laughs> for some advice. Kia, you are Drake. What advice do you give Chris Brown? Well, man, Chris, I told you, you got to stop calling these bitches hoes, number one, because these bitches just want to be loved, man. And I know your problem was is you didn't pick a stripper. <laughs> it's right. Oh. The baby mama calls Chris Brown, Candace, you're the baby mama. Go ahead. What do you say to Chris? Wait, who called me what? Nia, you're the baby's mother. I'm you the call baby's mama? Yep, yeah, and you calling Chris Brown. Um, excuse me, Chris Brown. Hello, how you doing? Yo. <laughs> Wait, did Jimmy just say his response? <laughs> He did. He really did. Wait, but hold up. I love the fact that the baby mama calls him Chris Brown when she calls him. Like she said, she picks up the phone and she says, "Hey, Chris Brown." Hello, Chris Brown. Yo. Yo. Hello, Chris Brown. 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 Hello,
So at C A N D E three one three. Follow her. I also on have Twitter. a blog. What's your blog? She also has a blog. I think it's called CandyGirl.com. You think? Some days I don't know. Boom. Candy Girl, C A N D E G I R L dot com. So follow her on Twitter, check out her blog. Thanks for hanging out, Candace. It was so much fun, guys. I hope you invite me back again, even though I talked about your producer real bad. <laughs> well, no, this will be the last time. So <laughs> <laughs> we do we do appreciate you for hanging out this time. I wasted all my best liquor on you people. <laughs> That's why you should get old overhort. <laughs> and Jimmy, do you have do you have a little What's your Twitter name, Jimmy? How uh, can you find I don't oh shit, I don't know. Um so Jimmy is J Brit J Brit zero six. J B R I T T zero six. That's his yes. So follow Jimmy. He yes. always says insightful and funny things to say. And so make sure you connect with him. Because he's all about fashion. And, and if, all about fashion. And if and if, if if you follow me, you will also see a link to my very erudite blog. Yes. Boom. And you can get his blog. So follow him. Mm -hmm. Two for one, you can follow him and get information about his blog. Mm -hmm. Boom. And you can also get some old overhort. <laughs> and oh. straight rye straight rye whiskey. Straight rye whiskey. <laughs> Thomas <laughs> Jeff Thomas Jefferson is on the on the bottom. I see that. Is yeah, I see that. So next week we okay. make that. Next week we shall be back. We shall be drunk and we shall be talking. Have a great Boom. weekend, guys. Bye, everybody.